right, so I'm in uh, what, what we're affectionately referring to as OGHQ, you know, Obsessed Garage Headquarters. And, and I haven't actually made a video formally explaining what the heck it is I'm doing here. Uh, I'm sure you know, those of you who watch all the videos know what's going on, but for those of you who don't, uh, plus I think it's a pretty cool setup here, uh, I, I thought I'd make a video. I'm over here this weekend working on my custom install pressure washing solution. I uh, was uh, also looking at where I'm going to put some stainless shelving. Uh, so I figured what I'd do is explain what I'm doing here and then give you a tour of, of the facility and you know, talk through what the plan is here and you know, what's happening. So uh, I guess it's been a little less than a year now. I at least uh, a garage space uh, out by my office, which is about eight miles from my house, right? So it was over on the other side of uh, what, what's called the Villages, which is uh, this huge retirement community where my, where, where my wealth management office is. And so I, you know, for the longest time had been thinking, hemming and hawing, do I, do I build a smaller garage and, and do it now? Do I wait and do it when I'm ready to do it? Uh, do I take out a loan? Do I pay cash? You know, thinking through all of these things. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff, like for instance, our, our air compressor behind me here that I don't have any experience with. And I really think that the garage that I build is gonna be a long-term thing, something I'm gonna have for a long time. Time, and so I'd rather do it right. Uh, and it's something about through the process of designing it, you know, designing the layout, figuring out where it will go on the lot, um, dealing with uh, Morton buildings, and then transitioning into making a building that was block like my house. Uh, through that year and a half long process, uh, I, and I've come to the conclusion that I'm just not ready to do that yet. I'm not ready to take on that kind of a project. Uh, I, I don't think it would be smart financially to do right at this moment, uh, especially with the, with the construction of Obsessed Garage. So I'd leased that garage. It was a uh, 25 by 50, uh, 1,250 square foot uh, a little parcel in the, what's called My Garage Villages, uh, which is a combination of hobbyists slash you know, small businesses. And, uh, and, and so the, the idea there was it's next to my office. I had five cars and so I was storing the trailer and two of the cars there. Uh, and the intent was you know, at some point uh, to, to bring all of my packing and shipping stuff down here to Florida uh, and we would do it there. Uh, but I was struggling with one, it's eight miles from my house, uh, which doesn't seem far, but in this area, that's about a 20, 25 minute drive. Uh, and I found myself constantly wanting to go to the garage, but not going because it was a, you know, just a, it was a 45 minute ordeal to go out there and come back. Uh, and so during the you know, weekends when I do a lot of playing in the garage, it's just, it didn't fit very well. Uh, and, and so I, you know, I was, torn on what I should do there. You know, should I, should I, um, uh, you know, should, should I build Obsessed Garage headquarters there? You know, what, how, how should that be done? And so, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, you know, Obsessed Garage as a business, uh, as, a, as a, you know, I, I like to think of it as a consulting business has been exploding. Uh, I had this vision for for taking these you know these complicated products and and packaging them in a format that we all us discerning consumers the way that we would want to consume it. Of course, I started with the Krenzla, the pressure washer that I have against the wall over here, the the 1122, and and called it my complete Krenzla pressure washing solution, which has been just massively successful. Um, of course, I started the Obsessed Garage store with these T-shirts, which also was was crazy crazy successful, uh, and and so it's continued to grow, you know, substantially to the tune of you know we're doing about a quarter million in sales a month and, and growing, you know, pretty exponentially. The the growth curve is is pretty exponential at this point. So uh, it was in January of 2000, I guess February of 2017, when I asked my parents if they would do the fulfillment of my T-shirts. I had just launched. The, the Krenzla thinking I'd sell a few of them here and there and it's just exploded and so they're in Pennsylvania I'm in Florida uh, we're in the process of transitioning them to work full-time for Obsessed Garage LLC and to to do you know full-time product fulfillment and eventually uh, have my 
my dad, you know, just run the facility, uh, run the the fulfillment process, and then as uh, if it, can we continue to do, you know, more and more orders, probably have to have a, a a team or have some some young guys come in here and do the the actual processing of the packaging and have my dad run the you know run that that side of the logistics of the business. So you know, Obsessed Garage, uh, as an you know an accidental success, has necessitated necessitated some sort of facility, right? And so right now, um, my parents are in again in, in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, where I grew up, and they're doing all the packing and shipping out of their house, so, you know, 1,800 square foot house, and uh, and it's become. Uh, quite an issue in that um, you know sending pallets and things like that has become problematic. Uh, it's on a commercial location, so we've had to um, you know and plus space. You know I've got 10,000 microfiber towels in my old bedroom where I grew up. Right. Like, I guess this is the the dream of all small business, right? Of all of all, you know, hopefully future large business, uh, that it you know it starts out in your bedroom and then grows into something something more substantial. So, I knew through you know maybe late last year, mid to late last year, that you know, we were going to have to do something. Uh, and so the goal was to get my parents to to, to move here to Florida, uh, which we're you know we're working toward. So combine my garage desires and and not not ready to build the, the garage at my house, and now the need for a commercial location, uh, and 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 the um, you know the the success the the overnight success or ac accidental success of Obsessed Garage as a consulting business, and we need a space. We need somewhere to put the stuff, right? We need somewhere to to do this. Uh, and and so I I started to go and started looking at property and say you know could I you know buy like 10 acres and then develop it and uh, and it, just like the garage and I don't think I'm ready to do that I don't know it would be smart to do that I, I'm so interested in, in crafting and creating all this stuff and pursuing things like like on wall pressure washers and and uh, mounting solutions for for uh, for Rupes polishers and just being able to offer all of this stuff in package form right and so I have this vision for what you know the obsessed garage is the destination looks like both physically and virtually right what it looks like as a, as a destination uh, what the obsessed garage channel uh, looks like uh, and and so now I'm you know I'm, I'm I'm building this spot this place I mean you see the compressor and the flooring and and you know I'm gonna be honest with you I mean this is all cool stuff that I want you know I want to have uh, but it's become a you know a a passion project if you will and so this facility this is uh, 50 by 40 so it's 50 wide 40 feet deep single 10 foot by 10 foot 10 foot wide 10 foot tall garage door uh, it's completely insulated uh, I've uh, I've drywalled the entire you know all four walls only only two of them were two of them were, were drywalled only really one and a half of them had drywall on them so I had a, a vision for what this would look like uh, my guess is that my little testing grounds over here with the lift and the cabinets and the things like that are, that are coming will probably get overtaken and hopefully in short order by product storage packing and shipping and making this you know the temporary facility to then if I'm fortunate enough to be successful enough to then go buy some property build a bigger warehouse and then build again that destination that I'm talking about uh, but for now this is a you know it's a 2,000 square foot facility that 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 meets the it exceeds the need uh, by by quite a large large margin and so that's why I've turned it into my uh, testing grounds for products to put the lift in and and be coming here and polish cars and maybe host some events and things like that uh, and then um, and, and and then we'll, we'll see what happens uh, so much less risk I think it's a much smarter way to do this uh, and uh, and so I'm leasing the the, the, the building or leasing the, this this spot, uh, so I think the the lease with tax is uh, twenty three sixteen a month uh, is what I'm paying. I was paying um, uh, nine nineteen for the other place, uh, so this one is quite a bit more expensive. But it is literally a mile. It's one point one miles from my house. 
So now running a car over here takes six minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, and uh, if I wanted to get a garage opener, that'll probably cut down two or three minutes of the time. Uh, so, so it's just a hop skip from my house to come here. Uh, so it makes it more viable of a, of a place for me to have my garage and store, store cars. Uh, I have my wash bay at my house, so, which, which so now I have a combination of place to put the cars, place to wash the cars, uh, and a place to, to play with stuff, combined with now the future, you know, packing, shipping, uh, storing a product area, uh, and, and really just a place to play with cool stuff and to have people over and hang out and do, do fun stuff, right? Uh, so it becomes a, a, I guess you could say hobby, as much as I hate that word, a hobby garage slash uh, business place, right? So what I'm going to do here is, now that you know why I have this, this place, uh, I'm going to give you a tour, show you where I'm at, show you what I'm thinking. Uh, I always value the input that you guys have when you say, well, I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, I don't always listen. Sometimes I have to learn myself, uh, but I'm going to share with you what, you know, what the, the, the general thought process says has or ha is or has been as I've put this together uh, and uh, just mainly just give you a look into what, what this place looks like uh, and then a look, uh, maybe a glimpse into the future as I continue to, to add stuff to, to the facility. Uh, and then hopefully, hopefully uh, those of you who care would, uh, you know, maybe someday come and hang out here and we can do something cool. You know, polish some cars, do some training, invite some, um, some, uh, uh, some, you know, some of the great companies that make these great products that we're all interested in out here to teach us about it. Uh, so that, that's the, you know, the design of this facility. So let me grab my other camera. And we'll walk around and I'll talk you through it. All right, so to give you some perspective, uh, my house is this way. All right, so my house is uh, basically a, a mile that way, right? And my parents' house is going to be about a mile this way. Uh, so strategically, you know, position-wise, this is a great place to be. So here, my size, this is a 4,000 square foot building. Uh, my side is from that garage door over. And then the other guy, uh, BCBI, his name is Chris, uh, he's, a, he's a retiree here in the villages that built his own facility and then built it twice as big as what he wanted so that he could you know, lease out the other side. So he's a Corvette guy, has a Benpack lift, has a Quincy compressor, and you know, so it works out perfectly for us, right? And so he really spared no expense. I mean, the, the, um, the drive-in, you know, big trucks can get in and out of here because this isn't all that busy of a street. Uh, but uh, we can bring in trucks even though we don't have a loading dock. Um, I don't know if I'll get a forklift at some point or at least some sort of temporary type forklift. Uh, but the, you know, the entrance here, this is my, what will be my front entrance. And then of course the side entrance with the, uh, you know, with the garage door. Uh, and so, you know, we could probably fit 30 cars in this parking lot if we wanted to. Uh, but it's a pretty neat little setup, nice flat drive. Uh, I'm going to be able to put um, dumpster back there, and uh, mainly for cardboard. Just so, and it's I did deal with an insane amount of cardboard, as you might imagine, for all this cool stuff that I always have coming. So let's come back. We'll come back around to the front here uh, when uh, a little bit later, because I'm going to show you this new. Uh, uh, I bought a new air uh, beverage cooler, so I'm going to talk to you about that. We'll, we'll unbox that here. Uh, but the intent would be, I'm going to do an obsessed garage type, probably, I don't know what color, but uh, I'm going to have Danger Brain design me a, 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 a canopy, so to replace the green, and then probably put some sort of obsessed garage sign on the side here. Uh, so I'm going to be tackling that here, here shortly. So let's take a walk inside. Don't judge me, the Raptor's dirty. All right, so here's the here's the entry. So, first thing, obviously, Swiss Trax flooring. Um, I had to improvise here and actually epoxied the uh, these this piece here. If you haven't watched the Swiss Trax install video, I pressure fitted and epoxied it be just because of the way the you know everything is built off of the garage door, right? And so this sticks down a little further, and so I had to glue those because when we cut the tile, we're missing the little pegs that snap in place that we have here because the garage door would be more important, 
right? And so the design was to simply carry, just to keep it simple, was to carry the black border uh, all the way throughout. With the exception of this, uh, I have my rubber tracks here because that's where the uh, where the packing area is going to be. Um, but the intent would be to, or the intent was to just carry the black border, just to break up the gray a little bit, which is sort of signature signature Mormon style, right? Um, so when we when I first leased the place, this entire back wall was open, right? This wall was drywalled but the front wall here was also open and same with this side area here with the exposed ducts and everything so i had uh, drywall put in so we did metal 14 foot studs up to yay which was sufficient i thought uh, covered up the i-beams and uh and you know finished off the the facility by doing uh um, trim everywhere uh, so I did uh, did baseboards throughout. I decided not to texture the walls; they're just flat, you know, normal drywall. Uh, this is um, you know, so everybody's always asking me about color. This is uh, Sherwin Williams white, and uh, and uh, using Pro Classic on the trim and the doors, right? And then we have uh, this is a Benjamin Moore color. Uh, I always use uh, semi gloss on the trim and doors. And then we do uh, we do um, flat on the walls, but this is Benjamin Moore AC25, which they call Harbor Gray. Now my painters are Sherwin Williams dudes, and they like to use cashmere. Uh, I think they use cashmere. Uh, cashmere is the you know the, how they have different. They have super paint. They have all these different types of types of you know paint that you can order. Um, but uh, I think they like cashmere because it goes in the gun. Uh, I think it's a little thinner than like super paint. But normally I would use super paint or Benjamin Moore Ben. Um, using the higher end stuff that they say is more washable, I generally don't like to use those because they always have a sheen to them. And I like flat, flat. The disadvantage of flat is if you touch it, like if you notice here, you know, you touch it a little bit, you get some staining. Uh, but the advantage is I can just grab a paintbrush and just touch it up whenever. And so I'm sure my dad and mom will be in here touching this up all the time as the walls get, get tapped. So anyway, Benjamin Moore, Harbor Gray, uh, and uh, I use either the Ben line or Sherwin-Williams uh, Super Paint and flat version. So you can take a Benjamin Moore color to Sherwin-Williams, they can match it. It's called AC-25. So flooring, uh, Swiss tracks as normal, Swiss tracks uh, slate gray, and then black, jet black. Uh, these are all plastic tiles. This section here, the thought process is to have it, uh, have it in gray. Uh, I'm sorry, in rubber, rubber. So because we'll be doing lots of standing here, and we'll see how, how traffic flow happens. Uh, but I have a little, this little section up to the, up to the uh, doorway is rubber just to, you know, just to make this a little less fatiguing uh, because obviously you can see where I have it taped off. I'm gonna be doing most likely a Lista um, standing type uh, solution where we'll have, um, I'm gonna be using ship station. Uh, I'll have um, a, uh, a Mac, uh, a MacBook Pro here with a, with a large display uh, and uh, some sort of black and white laser printer. Uh, we're, we'll be doing all of our preparation for, for packing. And then I'm gonna be doing a large uh, four foot by eight foot Lista table on big heavy duty casters that I'll be able to move around uh, so that I'll be able to take over and do, uh, do you know, un unboxing videos and things like that. You know, probably having the camera facing back into the cabinet array, uh, but that's the, the intent here would be have a big heavy duty uh, lift uh, a packing station uh, where we'll have you know boxes and things underneath for, for packing. Off to the left here is the bathroom. Uh, you know, the bathroom isn't typical OG style. We undercut the doors just to show you the solution of what I ended up doing for the transition. Just got a uh, you know, little toe kick or whatever you call that, little door transition. And screwed it down with some tap cons. I'll probably put some saber cabinets in here, uh, just because I can, and you know, so typical, you know, single stall bathroom. I'll probably put some sort of mirror up here as well, and then maybe do some obsessed garage logoed stuff in here to make it look cool. 
anyway so that's the that's the bathroom so this wall here the intent is to this will be to display the uh, and I doubt I'll use it very often here, but this will be to, dis to display the custom install solution, uh, which will be the uh, the K1325TS, that's this here. Obviously we won't have the hose running down, uh, but I'll have a hose reel on the wall, uh, and so that's coming here, and have it plumbed uh, just to sort of display and use. Uh, somebody uh, had a good idea uh, to, I'm gonna put some stainless um, door trim whatever you call them, protectors. So if I do run the hose out the door, I can. I'll probably put it on the garage door area as well. Uh, speaking of this, I need to get a garage door opener for the uh, you know insulated door. So I'll be doing that here soon. Um, oh, also I'll have the Mosmatic you know holster for our you know Mosmatic gun and wand. You know we'll be sitting here on the wall somewhere, I'm waiting to get my again get the Cox hose reel to test that out. Uh, and then we'll always have the 1122 and then the, the DIW, uh, or the or DIC, sorry, DIC uh, 20 uh, CR Spotless in the corner here. I'll mount that uh, there, that, that thing somewhere, the, what do we call that, the fire extinguisher. And we'll be cutting that pipe, the drain pipe off the wall as well. I'm probably going to have the, uh, the plumber punch a hole through the wall. We'll put a pre hose bib on the outside of the building so we have that too in case we need it. Uh, but that's what this this wall will be kind of the showcase wall for the Krenzler machines which I mainly just want to look at it's crazy to me that I ju I wanted one of these so badly you know I wanted a I wanted a Krenzler pressure washer so badly and now I have them all over the place it's so cool so awesome uh, to just to be able to do to, to, to do what I'm doing here and you know out here playing with this thing I mean look how clean this came out. I'm really psyched about this stay tuned for videos on this But I'm doing some these are zinc, but I'm having I'm gonna be having stainless anti-vibration uh, clamps clips I took the uh, the power cord and just you know zip tied it down uh, And so then you could I could cut this uh, I may not I don't know if there really is a need, or a need to, but yeah, I could cut this to fit if I wanted to. Um, and, and I didn't really have much of a choice where to put this thing. Uh, so the box is already there, but it, it works out nice and cleanly. So we'll have a valved system, much like I do in my wash bay at my house. So the right side of the building, I wanted to keep this open here so that we can bring pallets in. We're gonna test and see how the Swiss Tracks does with uh, with pallets coming in here all the time. I may even just have them put the pallets. I'll set the pallets down outside the door and then you know carry the stuff in. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I wanted to keep this area the flow open. We'll probably do most of our staging here for UPS. So we'll probably have this lined up for UPS to pick up, um, or maybe even in, in, in here. Uh, I don't know, we'll see. Or possibly in front of the door. Workflow is something that I'm gonna figure out, and I'm sure some of you guys that are, you know, do a lot of, of uh, production, manufacturing, packing, and shipping are probably cringing at what I'm thinking here. But I'll figure it out, we'll learn, we'll, we'll, we'll get it right. Uh, but for now, the main idea here is I wanted to keep this open uh, so that we can move stuff in and out you know, nice and cleanly. Um, the buckets probably won't go here, I'm not sure where I'll put them, but uh, we'll do it somewhere nice. So this side of the garage is my playground or testing grounds where I get to play with stuff, right? I'll have a, uh, a video, I'm gonna do a, a full video, an install, a basic install video. I know I did the five part series of me fumbling through, but I'm gonna do a much simpler, much quicker, probably 25 minute video, just showing all the, all you know, exactly how to do the lift. It'll save you a lot of trouble uh, because I had well, quite a bit of trouble figuring it out, not knowing what I'm doing. Uh, but this is the Twin Bush TWS3-19 is the lift. Right, and so I'm really happy with how this came out. Uh, my buddy Mike uh, is fabricating, and actually they're on the way, a little ramp for this uh, so that we won't uh, hit the pinch welds and be able to easily get the lift blocks underneath any of the cars. So it'll be a little, say, little incline up to a three inch uh, tall 
flat section, 18 inch flat section. It'll be powder coated steel. Uh, we'll probably start fabricating and offering these to people if they're you know, interested in doing, you know, doing something like this lift. But I'm really, really impressed with the quality after getting all the little quirks, the little things figured out, which were almost all my mistakes. Uh, not knowing how to do it, but uh, that stay tuned for that video. I think that'll be really helpful to people. So uh, the intent here will be I'm going to have eight stainless steel shelves. So much like this, the same same exact shelves, much like the shelves in my wash bay, but I'm going to do eight. They'll be eight inch, so the same depth as this, but 32 inches wide. This is only 18 inches wide. So we'll have eight shelves, you know, four and four next to my polisher rack array. All right, so that'll be that'll be mounted uh, to the on the wall here. Again, nothing's going to go past here. Uh, I'm not sure where I'll put the speaker, but the, my monitor audio. I have these; they're like 4,500 bucks a pair, so I might as well use them. These are from my home theater days when I, you know, was a monitor audio rep. Uh, and so, uh, I noticed we have I have just old monster M2.2. Whether you're a monster guy or not, but uh, still decent speaker wire, uh, which I probably won't be able to use. Um, but I'll be using all my. This is my old home theater gear. I have an Integra preamp and a BNK Ref 200.7. So really good stuff that will go in the cabinets here in the corner. And so what I'll likely have is a Velodyne DD15, the monitor audio speaker over here on the right on the left side of the cabinet, and have the other on the right side of the cabinet, uh, which will be really killer audio. I'm not gonna do a TV in here. I'm not gonna do any kind of display, um, but it'll be really killer audio for what, you know, what this room needs. It's kind of echoey in here as well. So maybe, maybe if we get really rich and famous, we'll do some acoustic panels on the wall. But um, I'll have all the pneumatic polishers here coming to complete the set. Uh, those are the, you know, the 21s, both the ES21 and the 21 Mark II. Uh, the 15 Mark II and ES, the Duetto, uh, we'll have the 3 inch, the LTA, uh, LTA 125, LTA 75, and then LHR 75 as well. Uh, so we'll have all the pneumatic polishers, you know, on the on the you know the racks, which I think look great. These are from uh, KXK Dynamics, uh, Jason Kilmer, Andy Ward. Uh, or the guys that came here and you know, trained me on or taught me about uh, wet sanding, but they've manufactured these. I like to think I have a part in, uh, in, in having them, making them create these. They had a triple polisher rack. I wanted a single polisher rack so I could do something like this. Look how clean that is. And then my buddy Tony made me a, a rack. You know, we just made a, it was just a piece of uh, one by one by six that we made so that we didn't have to try to hit studs. Um, uh, but uh, depending on what cabinetry we do, uh, I'll end up, I may end up doing like a little audio rack here and we'll probably take this power cord and move it down. Um, but we'll see, we'll see how that goes. So the twin bush, the control unit here is gonna stay there. Notice, you know, I ran it back and then down nice and clean, cut the switch tracks around it. Everything looks great, I think. I think it looks super clean. Um, I left the switch tracks cut around these sections, but we'll, we'll play with that. Um, I think it's going to stay that way. We'll see how the ramps do when they come. Um, we'll talk about the, the compressed air system here shortly, but the intent, uh, this is taped off for sonic cabinets. You know, I really have my heart set on Lista. Uh, so I think I'm going to do Lista in here. So the Lista will come out another couple of inches. So this is 19.7. The Lista stuff is uh, 22 and change. So it'll come out at another couple of inches. Uh, and the Lista doesn't have a dedicated ca corner cabinet solution like Sonic does. Uh, but I think what we can do is we can probably take Lista cabinets and have it fit the Sonic tools. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm waiting for Lista to give me a design so that I can start working on it. Uh, I just haven't had time because I'm so focused on getting this uh, custom pressure washer solution done. Um, but uh, eventually I'm going to start digging into Lista. Lista is extremely complicated, really difficult to figure out. And so I think um, 
I think I'm gonna de dedicating some time. I've also built my office at Raymond James, and so I've been a little sidetracked on on cabinets, but that'll be coming. And so I'm gonna do a whole array in the corner here, which I think is gonna be really really cool. So that'll that'll dictate depending on the depth and whether I can fit. I probably won't be able to fit the B and K. So I'll probably end up doing a nice, really clean, neat audio rack right here. Um, and then we can probably put security camera. Uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. So another thing, another major thing that's coming uh, is, uh, is the notice up here. We put, I don't know, the camera's gonna have a tough, hard, tough time focusing, but we put uh, some, uh, some Unistrut overhead because I'm going to have um, both pneumatic and power hanging down in all four corners of the car, right? And so we're gonna have a line here, here, behind and behind. So I'm gonna have power and, so electric and pneumatic coming from our Jenny compressor, right? So I'm gonna have Cox hose reels overhead uh, combined with, uh, yeah, so both Cox Power, uh, the PC-13, and then the, uh, the uh, and all of these are gonna be easy coil. I'll have a whole video series on those. It's gonna be incredible. Just wait till you see what that looks like. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, so that'll be coming here or soon as well. So let's talk a little bit about the compressor. Uh, this, uh, you know, I know that we have this giant compressor in the middle of the room. I know it's, it's going to make some noise, but, uh, you know, the times we'll be using it, we'll be using pneumatics anyway, largely, for polishing. So I'm not worried about the noise. I wanted it front and center. I wanted to look at it. Uh, it's not nearly as loud as I thought. I mean, it's certainly not comfortable in here when the thing's on. Um, but I've got, I've got a little more work to do with our magnetic drain line. And, you know, creating some sort of little bucket over here on the left. Uh, we'll figure that out. But man, I'm so psyched with how this came out. So this is a Jenny uh, W5B ADV. I'm now a Jenny dealer. I'm getting set up. I'm all set up and approved, you know, to, to buy these things and then to offer them to you. So just hit me up. Just email me if you're, you're ready to buy one. I can get any of them. And I've become pretty well versed in them so we can have a conversation about it. Uh, we mounted it with uh, anti-vibration mounts, a.k.a. hockey pucks. Uh, it's mounted to uh, to expansion expansion anchors, um, and so that feeds via AN lines. So the AN lines feed the Prevost Alto three half inch in and outlet uh, pressure regulator. That's about uh, the things like I think ninety seven bucks, uh, and then goes. Actually, I take that back. It feeds my Air Rev Rev twenty. Um, these are about uh, 2300 bucks as it sits you know, with the filters, the air rev, the mount, and everything. Uh, so that you know, then feeds my filter regulator and then goes out up through one inch Prevost lines. And just wait, you guys, until I show you more of this. We're going to have a whole video uh, on, on finishing this. If you haven't watched the install video, um, the cleanliness of how this stuff mounts uh, i've seen them pretty much all of them and there's nothing like this stuff i just have this hanging here just you know just because but man it's incredible i've adopted the euro standard which i'll be talking more about uh, euro high flow which is an easy you could easily adopt it with your uh, compressed air system as well so i'm going to be offering all of these fittings all of the piping, all of the you know piping solution stuff here shortly in the store. It's gonna give me some time. Um, if you have like a you know, significant Prevo system, you need me to custom build for you. I can, um, but if you know buying a little one-off stuff is gonna take me a few months to get all set up. Um, but we have the lines run you know, throughout and valves set up here for when I do my overhead hose reels. It also feeds the lift. I've actually got a nice little ear clamp cover here to put on. I'll, re, I'll redo this, but feeds the lift. Uh, and then I just put a hose reel here just to have a hose somewhere, you know, a hose, hose holder. Uh, but most of what we'll be doing will be via the hose reels. Man, let's just look at how clean these wall manifolds are, how amazing the quality is of the, every part and piece. There's nothing else like this in the world. It's just really incredible. 
So that's the compressed air system. Um, again, the only thing left to do is to do a bucket to catch the, you know, the water overflow. Uh, and then, um, I don't know, I may need to, you know, I'll probably have to run these lines as well. I'll probably have to run uh, from the bottom of the filters into that same bucket. So I'll, I'll create something clean for that. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, uh, I did a, uh, we did a, a carrier and I think it's a carrier I don't think this is Infinity. Yeah, it's Carrier, but it's not the Infinity series. I think it's a two-ton um, uh, mini split combined with the one and a half ton that we already have. This is the ream that's in here. So uh, Brian Orr and Kalos came in here and got this dialed in, so we should be good from a air perspective. There's an extra, you know, light. One of my OG lighting solution lights and not the lights in here are not game changing but they're really good and they're a lot better than i thought they were going to be uh so you know i've been selling lots and lots of lights these are available in the store in both the six bulb and four bulb they're 5000 k 5000 calvin uh, it's just perfect very comfortable uh not a lot of shadows in here we have 19 fixtures in this 2000 square foot facility it just looks incredible i think it looks great so obviously the scaffolding will get put away here once I get my hose reels installed. Uh, but back here in the corner is where we're gonna do all of our uh, pallet racking uh, and, uh, and um, hopefully, uh, hopefully Lista get, allows me to do the stack system. Maybe we should, uh, we should uh, Twitter bomb. <laughs> Actually, they probably don't even have a Twitter pro handle. Um, but maybe we should send emails to list to say, hey, get Matt this stuff so we can figure out how it works. Uh, but uh, I, we're going to be doing some, some larger, probably not pallet racking, but uh, storage for all the products come in. But I'm going to also have, they'll have back the back cabinets here for all the, all the different, you know, waxes and polishes and pads and everything. Uh, so that'll all be here. I've kind of laid it out. Uh, I'm going to have, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, I forget what they're called, but to put all the MTM fittings and all the Prevo stuff in little cubbies, little cubby holders. Uh, and then I wanted to make sure that we can walk and get in here. All the t-shirts will be in the bins back here, uh, but I want to be able to walk around and get to all the product, you know, to get a pallet all the way in here if I needed. And then, like I said, when I started the video, we'll probably end up pushing this way uh, if I just so happen to be fortunate enough. You know, we have some room to do some activities here in the middle. <laughs> so so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so let's go, let's go get our fridge out. I wanted to show you that fridge. It's something that I just bought. So let's go get the fridge out and talk about that a little bit and put that in place. And we'll talk about the entry and maybe you guys can give me some ideas there. All right, let's unbox the sucker. This is a, uh, a New Air AB1200B. I think it's black. I hope it's black. I hope that's what the B is for. These guys reached out to me and you know, I, I don't really want a super high end. I think this thing's like 270 bucks. Uh, and they you know, are offering all kinds of obsessed garage discounts. Uh, I'll put the discount code in the description. Um, but I think we can get 20% off, which uh, it's already pretty inexpensive. Uh, you know, we'll see. I, I didn't want a uh, Sub-Zero fridge in OGHQ. This is mainly just to hold bottles of water. Uh, and uh, so we're, we're going to put this in the lobby. Maybe together we can talk through where it should go and where it should stay. But let's see what this thing looks like. Again, I didn't want something that was you know, 2,000 bucks. I think this thing foots the bill. In the pictures, it looks pretty cool. So let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. All right, so when we go carry it, put it in place. I'm gonna see how see how to set it up. So I don't know if this thing's gonna stay right here. I'm gonna put it here for now. Um, I think the entry, it says uh, 54 bucks a year. But I think this entry will be, I'm not really one for putting couches and stuff in places. So I think that 
you know, most of the time when we're hanging out here, we were gonna be doing stuff. So I think that I'm probably gonna put some Sabre cabinets in here, maybe hang some t-shirts. Um, I was really thinking about putting on the wall behind us here, I was thinking about putting all of my, um, all of my product packages on the wall, like the car washing and wheel cleaning. I don't know, I might put that inside. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but anyway, maybe you can give me some input on what, what you think we should see here. But I'm not, I don't wanna make some goofy lounge or something, that's not really my style. I don't want people sitting here hanging out anyway. If anybody's here hanging out, we're gonna be doing something. Yeah, this is gonna work well. So, you know, I started chasing there, heading down that rabbit hole, of looking for a little beverage cooler and was gonna spend, you know, 2,000 bucks on one and uh, you know get some modified wine cooler but i think this will this will serve a purpose you know assuming we get some longevity out of it and this is the a1200 so i might uh, modify which yeah we'll probably take a couple of these out because i'm going to be doing water bottles in here primarily if i have soda around i'll drink it even though i don't even really like it so I, I probably won't have any soda in here. So we probably won't mess with that. Just fill this up with tons of water. Let's see here. Yeah, but I mean, you can tell that the inside of this, this is all plastic. Um, and I carried it in here by myself, so it's not super heavy, but I think this will be sufficient. I think this will, this will solve what we need. It looks clean. It looks really nice. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, it looks, certainly looks the OG part. You know, this isn't Krenzler level stuff here, but I think for what we're hoping to accomplish, I think this is gonna solve our, solve our problems. Yeah, I think I can live with that 54 bucks a year. So I was thinking about that. I was like, I don't know if I want to plug a fridge in here 24 seven, but shit, I think I can swing that. Let's see here. Let's take a look at the back. Power cord. So we have our setting here. Adjust the, I guess you can turn it off as well. So it came preset to four, so I'll leave it at four. There's a power switch up here, you can turn it on and off. Oh no, that's the light, oh that's cool. Probably just leave the light off. And then, you know, there's a couple of extra racks that I'll probably take out. There's two extra racks. And then, you know, just so I can fit my water bottles, I'll go to Publix and buy a bunch of, bunch of drinks to put in here. Maybe I'll get some fancy stuff, get some coconut water and stuff like that. That looks pretty slick. I like this thing. I think this will do the trick. And then you can turn the light on as well. Yeah, cool. So I'll put these other racks up in the attic in case I ever decide to change how I'm, how I'm doing it. So anyway, so this is the entrance, you know, the front entrance in here. So I think I'll put stainless shelves on the wall on this side. Obviously, got to do. I'm gonna do a different light in here. It's kind of yellow. I'm not a huge fan of the flooring, but I'm not gonna mess with that right now. Here's our, you know, air handler. That uh, so this is the this is powered by the one one and a half ton, and I didn't mention this earlier. You know, we put vents in to help aid the mini split in cooling the entire area. So again, we'll probably put some stainless shelves on the wall here. I may do some sort of saber cabinets. We'll see what we decide to do, where the new air will go. Maybe I'll do some cabinets flanking it. I'm not sure. Or this might go in the office here. So I think I'd like to make this like a podcaster, podcasting slash uh, podcast studio slash you know office. So, you know, acoustically, you know, the height of the ceilings, these are at eight foot ceilings, a little over eight feet. So I could, I could do some really cool stuff with this. So I don't know, we'll see. This will be something we'll, we'll address after we get done with the rest of the stuff. So let's go up top here. Let me show you the attic. In a normal, 
matty fashion. I'd rather show you it all than give you too little in case you care. So this will be for box and product overflow and uh, storing all my car parts. Hey. So there's the G3 exhaust. You got some micro restore that they accidentally sent to me instead of my dad. But so this is a little you know storage area. And then here's what it looks like. A little, a little closer view of the Prevo stuff. And that looks so cool. Look how awesome that looks. And then from below, from above. Man, I'll be able to get all kinds of cool uh, photos up here. Dang, the S2000 looks clean. I secretly i'm not sure i'm not i'm, I'm kind of hoping somebody buys it but kind of hoping not so anyway that's uh that's the current state of oghq i hope that clears some things up makes more sense of what i'm doing here uh i'm gonna be playing with stuff and uh, you know, creating Obsessed Garage as a both physical and virtual destination, like I've uh, have a vision for. I, th I think it's going to be really cool. So, anyway, thanks to all of you for watching. Thanks for uh, thanks for the support, and uh, you know, catch you on the next one. Stay tuned for more crazy. So what happens when the when the force pulls you back? Your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. Foot to the floor.